So here's Spalding University Library. Uh, there's an article inside there if you just walk in, go to the left, um, about uh, Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali, he had, uh, had there was a nun that was here that had encouraged Muhammad Ali to start reading. And so, and especially poetry, so when it comes to, you know, his, uh, his rhymes, his hip-hop couplets, um, it could be, some, some people give Muhammad Ali credit for being the father of hip-hop, so... The, uh, his inspiration for poetry and becoming the father of hip hop may have actually just came from Spalding University's library. So I'm at Waverly Hills Sanitarium. Sanatorium. You could actually drive down here. You mess with the chains, it's not actually locked. You could drive all the way down. I don't even know where it's going. With snow drift, and it's gorgeous. You, you said if the gate opens, you would go. You're a liar. Nah. So you got a um, power plant on Dixie Highway coming from Fort Knox to Louisville. I know my shit's kind of fucking dirty now. Um, there's River Girls Lounge. So there's some nudie bars around here. It says $2 a beer. Um, yeah, so big ass power plant. There's always like a cop that's at the entrance. I guess there's a lot of it employs a lot of people and shit. I'm not sure which one is Kane Run. I think uh, this ain't Kane Run. This is Dixie Highway, but it could. I don't know. There's there is another one I know by a trailer park that's actually embedded in Louisville. So there's two fucking coal burning power plants in this city, and one of them been polluting this you know the hell out of people. Yeah, so uh, Miss Chancellor, she's a Nazi. Uh, Judy, Julie, Julie Chancellor. Just the Fuhrer of fucking U.S. history and government, the Fuhrer of social studies. I think she's like the chair. Come from California. She's a wasp. She didn't want me to talk about the 1855 Know Nothing riots. Uh, she was so fucking pissed off that I would disagree with her. You know, like with the, the Know Nothing 1855 riots was a thing that happened in Louisville. There's only been four riots. It's a good introduction into our heritage because since white people didn't just fucking fall out of a void, they didn't just plop out the sky. You know, they've been here for quite some time. The Ku Klux Klan, they even defended white women. You have 75% of JCPS is white women. She threatens ISAP for the most trivial and petty things. She needs to put a constant fucking force and oppression on them the whole time. Do this, do that. She made it a rule that you had to yell at children. You must yell at the children, she said. So You know, like, that's that's fine, that's how you do things, but I, I can't do it that way. And, um, you know, whereas maybe I need to be a little bit stronger, meaner, she needs to be nicer. Because that's, I can't even handle that psychoticness. You, you, she's censoring my words, right? The No Nothing Riots was a perfect introduction. I'm Bavarian and Prussian and I'm uh, 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 Austrian and Bohemian and African. So I got five different ethnicities that, you know, is worth the discovering. And the Prussian education system, 1806, that's what America lives on, the Prussian education system. So what the Germans have done for America, um, essentially, they have... The, you know, everything good about America came out of Germany. And so, you know, you have these wasp, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, which I suspect is the reason why she didn't want me to talk about it. But it's important to look at trends throughout history. 
so the trend is in 1855 you had Germans and Irish who came from you know Germany and Ireland and they lived here um, it so the um, the oppression that I endured as a child basically once you got under someone's thumb they would mock you make fun of you and then they would just have you know once they coercion works unfortunately coercion works when you act shitty to somebody either you'll gain their compliance or you won't and so a lot of these teachers they're not getting up there saying information that's interesting they're not packaging the information in an interesting way they're not capturing the curiosity of the students um, they're basically saying you have to listen to me or else you'll go to ISAP you have to listen to me and you can't lay your head down you can't you know you can't get on your phone you can't do anything else you must listen to what I'm saying because I'm the dictator and every fucking word that comes out of my mouth is gold and uh, unfortunately that's the exact wrong way of teaching only 5% of a lecture is retained only 5% so you want to sit there and pretend because you said something, no, that isn't what makes people memorize a thing. When they talk about it, when they teach others about it, that's when they start memorizing. Um, but it's not because of charisma, it's because of fucking force. That's why you have to listen to Julie Chancellor from Valley High School. And it's uh, she's a psycho, right? So, I mean... I easily basically do as I say or I'm making a phone call and you're out of the room you're I'm gonna fuck you up right and um, what that reminds me of like the warm-up example uh, she had says here's this little thing that was right after the 1848 revolutions or the 1848 uh, uh, or 49 I think they were called the 49ers right so you had an influx of Germans and Irish coming in here they spoke German they were Catholics, they were drinking alcohol, they lived amongst themselves, they weren't English Protestants, they weren't Anglo-Saxons, so they weren't, you know, um, of the makeup of the, or I guess, original whites of Kentucky. Also shows how racist these original whites are. They're, you know, so racist, they're against what traditionally are white people, or are white people now. Now they've been, you know, comfortably pretty assimilated into it. Um, and so you have, um, you know, um, it's white supremacy, so uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants were the ones that murdered a hundred Germans and Irish in Butchertown in Louisville, Kentucky, and they did it right at the, um, right at election time, and they want to influence the vote. They didn't want the pro-German, pro-immigrant candidate winning, and so they, they fucking attacked and murdered you to work on to get started so you can get working on a teach so, okay? So I was asked for questions. So I took a bunch of notes, and then I put it up there, and then she says, no, I'm not going to present this. And automatically, she's like criticizing it, right? Automatically saying that it's not good enough. And, um, and it was frustrating. It was frustrating. She basically says either you're not listening to me or something else. And she said several times, you don't listen to instruction well. Yeah, I know, because you're making me your bitch, and this is supposed to be an equal relationship. But... Regardless, the the point, the analogy that I want to make, it's uh, it's one of enslavement. That's I don't want to be her slave, and so that's all she can understand. If she's not the slave, then she's the boss, right? She can only understand the dualistic perspective. She doesn't understand equality. And so, this, this reminds me of two things. It reminds me of once you gain obedience or compliance over somebody, then you just become their fucking oppressor the whole fucking time. You just stay on them until they do every fucking thing that you tell them to do. And this reminds me of like going to split wood. Daddy says, hey, go split that wood. So I go, I split the wood. He goes over there, all oh, that, that's not good enough. You didn't split the wood good enough. You should have split more wood. You didn't split enough. You, you, you didn't split some of the bigger ones, the bigger pieces. You didn't split them. You didn't stack it. You didn't stack it right. Where the fuck am I at? Heard over a hundred Germans, and then how many people after that moved away? Because I mean, motherfuckers are murdering fucking Germans here, you know, and getting away with the shit. And motherfuckers ain't saying nothing about nothing. So it shows how racist the whites are, but it also shows a continuity because those same white Anglo-Saxon Protestants of Kentucky would be your Confederates during the Civil War, which would happen six years later. Then those Confederates would be those who'd be controlling state government in Kentucky for the next, you know, 30 to 40 years. The Gilded Age would be a fucking Confederate age for Kentucky. And so, you know, the 1855... 
No Nothing Riots opens up a whole bucket full of things that's going on. So I'm part Prussian, I'm part Bavarian, both are German speaking countries, but before Germany became a country. So 1871 is when Germany was formed and then Kentucky was formed in 1792. So the two examples that remind me, I mean, this is just like when Daddy says, hey, go go split the wood, all right? So go split the wood. Well, you didn't do good enough. You need to make, uh, you need to split some more. You, di you didn't stack them up right. Um, you, you, you split them and you spread them out all over the place. You know, I didn't spread them all out of, all over the place. I just put them, I just split them right where they were. And so once it was all done, it did look, you know, pretty impressive. But he hated that. He didn't want anything that I fucking did to look good. I mean, to be proud of myself, oh, my God. If I started getting proud of myself and sure of myself, then I'd be out of his control forever. So, you know, once it, once he got my compliance, once he knew that I was going to split his fucking wood because I'm bigger than you and I'm going to hurt you if you don't do as I say, once he knows that he got my submission, once he saw that his coercion was successful, then he knew he fucking owned me. And then he, you know, just kept on. He would laugh about my work, would say my work wasn't good enough. And it's just bullshit. It just kept on piling on top of each other, on top of each other. And basically, you just want to fucking, you know, like, say fuck it all. Man, where? I'm not going. <laughs> so the two examples that I think are like... Hear that? Oh, I guess it's... I'm running over shit on the fucking road, and it's a little slippery, so... Okay, so the two examples, once you gain compliance from somebody, then they'll always just fucking own you. They'll just drive you fucking crazy until you say, well, I'm just a bitch, you'll never fucking do anything, I'm just a fucking slave, just do as you're fucking told, or just kind of, you know, internalize and say one day something will happen, or fight, you know, stand up and fight and say, this is bullshit, you ain't treating me right, and I don't like what you're doing. And so that's, that's the, um, that's what we're looking at, right? So we have, we've got, um... The compliance. The other example of compliance was that homeless guy in California. Those cops, all they said, we just want to know your name. Just come over here and tell us your name. Once once they got him to go over there and tell him the name, then he said, what's in your bag? What's this? What's that? And they just kept on asking a whole bunch of fucking questions, pushing him until eventually they shot the motherfucker about, you know, a whole bunch of times, beat the shit out of him, killed him. And uh, he cried for his dad, and he said he was sorry about 20, 30 times. Just sorry, sorry, please don't hit me. Sorry, sorry. And the psychopath just kept on fucking wailing. That all began because a person said, hey, what's your name? Tell us your name. So, you know, to, to think that how coercion and how obedience to authority, how that shit works. If, I mean, to think that a motherfucker, you know, like that's actually... That's a lesson that we learn in management. You go from high structure to low structure. So you come in the school as a gangbuster. You come in as a fucking badass saying everybody's going to do the shit my way, you know, or the highway. And and that's what everybody does. That's what she says she did, you know. She had them on a routine. She had them all fucking oppressed and working how she wanted them to work. And so, um, you know, that's uh, that, that was the whole fucking point was to oppress the whole fucking thing. And that's the whole point was the management, you know, to manage people. I forgot the point exactly I was going to try to make there. But the um, in general, it's about compliance, about what you get compliance and the motherfucker owns you once they coerce you into doing some shit. Some, at first, they'll start out with little shit, do this, do that, right? I even seen that as a management tactic. Ask them to do something little first, and then once they do something little, then their likelihood of doing something big is has uh, increased that much that much more I think this is where I fucked up last time okay so yeah that's essentially that's essentially it those are the two examples go cut the fucking wood you didn't do it right shut up boy what are you doing don't look at me boy you're doing it all wrong go do it that way go do it this way what the fuck you need my advice you can't be proud of yourself. Don't be fucking proud of a good job you did. You, you what are you cocky? You don't be arrogant. Arrogant, proud to make a poor man out of you. And so, and then the uh, come here, hey, come here, boy. Tell me your name, boy. What's your name, boy? What's in your bag, boy? Give me, you know. And then once they start fucking harassing you like that, then they just fucking own you. 
What got to me was when she made fun of stare decisis. I was going through the Latin phrases and I asked her what per curium was. And per curium was a um, Latin phrase that she didn't understand. It meant like a, a opinion of the court or something. I, I forget, some type of opinion of the court. But she didn't know it at first. And I didn't just start making fun of her. Don't you know what that is? Ha ha ha. And then I said like two other things. And then she knew the second one. And then the third one was um, star decisis. And then she was like, you don't, you're a political science major and you don't know what star decisis is? It's like, motherfucker. How are you going to insult me? It wasn't that I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to pronounce the 